Right then, this is a quick road test video, and this is for a Honda CRV, and it's the 1.6 SE Navigator model, and it's the four wheel drive version. This particular car is registered WR15EHF, and mileage at the start of the road test is 99,741 miles. The reason for doing these videos essentially so that anyone that's looking at this car in an advert online actually gets to see that very car in operation. You were aware that to our cost unfortunately just what it's like to go and see a car which looks great in photographs and the description only to get there to find out it's got a fundamental problem which you clearly should have been told about. So the point of the video is to pick up on any issues there may well be, hopefully nothing at all, um, but also to give some feedback on the vehicle itself whilst driving on a section of the road test uh, route that any prospective buyer would go on should they be offered a test drive in the car. So coming to the car itself, been very well maintained um, all the way through. Um, we've just serviced the vehicle and the, the car's absolutely fine, it drives beautifully. Uh, engine starts absolutely instantly, settles to completely smooth, even idle. Um, there are no warning lights on the dashboard relating to the engine or any other part of the car for that matter. And temperature gauge is running at a third, which is exactly where it's meant to be on a Honda car, whether it be a petrol or diesel, and the car's been running for quite some time now. The engines themselves are just lovely, lovely units. Um, you get the more powerful engine in the um, four-wheel drive versions, uh, and it really, don't think a 1.6 isn't mad enough, because it picks up and goes better than the 2.2 ever did. It just absolutely flies along. Um, obviously very, very fuel efficient as well, so uh, that's a whole point of these, uh, these cars, to downsize them, and obviously much cheaper road tax there compared to the old 2.2 as well. But the engines themselves are just a fabulous engine to use day in, day out. Uh, as I said before, it's got loads of punch, but it's refined, sweet in nature. Um, on the move, you hardly even think it's a diesel under the bonnet. It's, it's just lovely um, and very long lasting. Uh, you know, we see these regularly offered, but we don't buy them. It's just not our thing. You know, with over 200,000 miles and still going strong. So. Engine then feeds through into clutch and gearbox. Clutch in the car, absolutely fine. Uh, bike points where it's meant to be. It's lovely and smooth and positive in actuation as well. Gearbox, obviously a six speed gearbox and, and a brilliant, brilliant gearbox. I mean, not only is it long lasting and tough as you'd expect on any Honda gearbox and it feels absolutely as new to use, um, but it's the quality of the gearbox and the gear um, engagement. It's, you know, much sportier than you'd expect in a car this type. Really short in throw, really precise, really snappy in action. It's a really high quality item and it's one of the very best gearboxes you're gonna use regardless of type of car. Coming to the steering of the car, again, always been a strong point on the CRVs because it makes the car feel lovely and solid and secure on the road. Um, it's very precise, very accurate for this type of car, and again, some manufacturers think it's an excuse to make them quite truck-like, it's a bit wandery and vague, but this isn't at all, but it feels lovely and tight on the road. It also tracks absolutely bullet straight, there's no vibrations coming back through the steering wheel at this speed or any speed up to the legal limits, and I was on the motorway yesterday and there wasn't so much as a shimmy through the steering wheel at all. Chassis of the vehicle, again, because Honda know this market so well, I mean, the CRV is the best selling SUV in the world. Um, so it's, it comes as no surprise to find that, you know, they've, they've come up with a brilliant, brilliant compromise, which is what suspension's all about. By the way, this has got the active safety pack, which is why it's just picked up on that uh, truck there. And the fact that I've crossed over the line, because it's got lane departure and collision mitigation. And as you can tell, it all works perfectly. And it's brilliant and it's a lovely thing to have on the car, by the way, should have mentioned it. Um, but yeah, no, the chassis just strikes a brilliant, brilliant compromise between um, ride comfort and body control. You're not really, in all honesty, looking for handling on a car like this. If you're driving sideways, then, well, I'm impressed, but it'd probably be quite antisocial, in all honesty. Um, so what they've done is they've given you a very compliant, comfortable ride, um, beautifully damped ride as well. Um, deals with pretty much all imperfections really nicely. Um, it's 
there's no nasty clanks or clunks coming from under the suspension either by the way it's just gone through an independent MOT without any advisories so that's all been checked um, but what it's really good at is like now really comfortable um, but when you go through the quicker corners in some cars of this type they can just loads of body motion which is not too bad for the driver because you can see what's going to happen but if you've got kids in the back faces planted inside an iPhone then you'll know what it's like but corners like this taken a bit quicker than normal just completely solid and then again this one sort of a slower speed one but again taken more quickly than I would just turn in hardly any motion on the car at all and it shouldn't be underplayed because that really makes a huge difference um, brakes on the car we've just fitted new brake pads on the front of the car they were on the low side but not they were fine but they were, they were low so we have changed them so I'm not going to brake too hard but I know the brakes are absolutely fine but just give them a shove now it's a lovely solid brake pedal um, but what I'm looking for is any kind of uh, vibrations or um, pulsing going on through the brake pedal of which there's nothing at all um, that tends to suggest things like um, disc wear basically in terms of extreme and warping look around inside the car lovely dashboard beautifully beautifully made here I am sitting in a car that's just under 100,000 miles and essentially there are no rattles buzz trims anything and this is real build quality I've said it on many many occasions on videos um, it does frustrate me when you read road test magazines and the same 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 manufacturers come up on build quality and always on brand new cars of course they don't come back to them in a hundred thousand miles time and see what they're like across the board not individual cars um, Hondas hold together wonderfully wonderfully well they are beautifully assembled and you shouldn't mistake harder plastics I mean, soft touch there but harder underneath as inferior build quality that's nothing to do with build quality that's material choice for practicality you wipe them clean they're very long lasting very sturdy but they're beautifully assembled absolutely brilliantly done all by the way works absolutely perfectly you've got a lovely big um, screen for the um, sat nav there which doubles up as you'll know for the rear parking camera dual zone climate control system air conditioning was checked in a, a nice warm workshop earlier today blowing out lovely cold air dashboard in front dead simple easy to read the information and a steering wheel that looks and feels absolutely as new in hand uh, cruise control works perfectly as every button we've checked and pressed anyway so we know it's all good um, it does of course this is a rare model because it being four-wheel drive most of these are actually two-wheel drive so you've got to be quite careful um, this four-wheel drive system is brilliant because there's no buttons to press it does it all for you Honda knew straight away that most people would be driving in perfectly good conditions as I am now so why have four-wheel drive wearing away because all that does is it uses more fuel puts more stress to the car and chews up your tyres more quickly um, should it need to go into four-wheel drive if you hit a bit of ice or snow or mud it instantly brings it in absolutely seamlessly and I've towed thousands of times using CRVs across muddy fields and pitches and never come close to getting stuck it's a brilliant system and its simplicity gives it its reliability because we've not so much as put a spanner on any of them over the 20 plus years we've been selling um, Hondas using this system um, as I said at the start of the video point of it as brief as it may be is just to show the car in operation um, but to feedback in any issues it, there's nothing at all it just drives like a car that's done a third of its miles it's a wonderful wonderful vehicle uh, any questions of course please don't hesitate do give us a call